Hello and welcome to Porting and Polishing Tips from CC Specialty Tools. Uh, you can find us online at ccspecialtytool.com. We're going to go over in this classroom style video, uh, chamfering port windows, which is something I see glazed over and just brushed over in a lot of videos. There's not a lot of explanation as far as why we chamfer, what it does, and the proper technique. Now granted, your power boost, your power gains will not come from chamfering. But it is a very important step, and we're going to explain why. So if you're going to do something, if you're going to bother doing it, do it right. Now, first off, in some of the videos that you'll see even here on YouTube, uh, you see people do what they call chamfering, and what they actually do is take a carbide burr. Let's pretend this is a carbide burr. And they come in here, and they off that angle, and zzz, off that angle, and they, just, they usually use air grinders, things to that nature, and just take off these little edges right here, and call that chamfering. Now that's a bad idea. This is why. Uh, you have to remember on the combustion side, this uh, block will usually be aluminum, but on the combustion side, you'll have cast iron cylinder liner or Nika seal or a hardened material like that. Now when you take a carbide burr and you actually go in and cut along that and do nothing else to the step, what you can actually leave is a little burr like you would have on a knife after you sharpen it that burr can protrude into the combustion chamber and it can protrude into the actual port window. Now what's bad is the whole idea of chamfering is as this piston is moving up and down, these piston rings will expand out into this port window. As they expand out into the port window, as they brush by, then they'll be pushed back in, up against the piston. Now you have to remember the idea of chamfering is to ease the transition of this piston ring in and out of these port windows. And it helps, you know, obviously it's going to help uh, ease the transition of the piston up and down, but mainly it plays a role in these piston rings. So if you leave a burr here, what you can actually do is start to cut up against the side, you know, the first few passes up against the side of that piston ring. That's unneeded wear to your piston rings that you just because someone didn't take the time to do it properly. The other thing is the burr to the interior of the port window, you spend all this time getting this nice and smooth. Now I don't, I don't recommend a, a mirror finish, but I do think you should get a smooth textured surface. Uh, you spend that time and now you've got a little burr to the inside of there that can actually cause turbulence um, as the air flows past it. So you need to keep that in mind. It'll do the same thing on the exhaust side. It can cause turbulence. So when you chamfer, what you should actually do is put a small little gradient here and smooth that out. Smooth it where you, got, you have a smooth point here, smooth point here, with like an abrasive or something to that nature. Diamond, uh, diamond impregnated carbide or cutter burrs work really good, uh, especially on cast iron and, and nika seal because they can wear that down really well and make a nice smooth transition. Now uh, let's go over a few of the dimensions as far as when you're doing this. Is it, with the combustion chamber, this little uh, this little notch right here, the cut, the cut in that you would make with the uh, flow of the piston with the to the internal side of the combustion chamber, you want it to be about 1.5 millimeters max. That means about 1.5 millimeters in this direction uh, max. So we're talking about very small um, lengths, but still you want to do about 1.5 or slightly less with the combustion chamber. Now back into the port window, you're looking at about 0.5 max. You don't go very far back in there. You get a nice little gradient. Like I said, that's going to ease the transition of that piston ring in and out of the port window. Uh, some other things to bear in mind is try to do this evenly when you're going, when you're going around the port window, when you're going around it, try to do that evenly. Don't leave any ramp. Uh, what, what that means is you get one side one side a lot deeper than you do the other. That can actually cause this piston ring to walk or break or wear it out even faster. Remember, your whole point is try to increase the amount of time, increase the efficiency of your engine, and they also increase the amount of time those piston rings last and the less wear and tear you can get on. If you rush through something like chamfering, you're defeating the entire purpose. Now let's go over here to the other side and look at some other dimensions about uh, chamfering the port windows. <coughs> Excuse me. One thing I recommend is trying to radius. Okay, a lot of port windows, when they come from the factory, are going to have more of a square um, 
It won't be perfectly square, but more of a square dimension to them. What you want to do is sort of radius them, this, you know, towards the inside, towards the combustion chamber. Radius them up. Because remember, there's going to be, an, as that piston ring's moving up and down, there's going to be a lot easier transition uh, with a slight rounded uh, port window than it would be to straight corners on squares. You know, if you have the, the piston will be moving up and down past this way, and as it bulges out into that port window, you know, you want it to have the least amount of resistance that it can as it comes in there. So towards the combustion side, the combustion chamber side, try to round those ever so slightly at the windows. That also, uh, we'll go on some of the, uh, in some of the later videos, we'll go over how rounding and changing these trajectories into the combustion chamber can also help uh, in other ways. Another thing that I want to go over is bridged port windows. A lot of your intake ports uh, will be bridged. That helps to wobble, and so the bottom of the piston as it moves past it doesn't wobble. Remember, the intake will be down here below actually below the piston part when going to the crankcase. So anyway, it will be bridged, uh, which is a good idea. I'll have you see a little metal bridge uh, in that port window. And that's a great thing because it helps reduce the amount of wobble or rock the piston has as it comes past it. But what can happen because of thermal expansion? As the engine heats up, if you have this original straight line that's often there from the factory, this thinner metal of the bridge can actually heat up and expand out into the combustion chamber. See, this would be the combustion chamber side. It can heat up and actually expand out the combustion chamber, rubbing the bottom of your piston. What you want to do is give a slight tapered curve back into the, back into the intake window to allow for that, to actually give it a, a better um, clearance once it starts to heat up. Now, we're talking about very small increments. Um, Actually going back into the port window, you only want to do about 0 or 0 0.05 to 0 0.08 millimeters recess in this dimension back into the port window. And above the top of the port window, you want to go up with the uh, wall of the combustion chamber about 1 to 2 millimeters. Not that much. Like I said, these are minor recesses. But these minor changes can play a big role overall, and they will definitely help extend the life of your uh, piston rings, which is, you know, if you're going to bother chamfering, that's what you're doing it for, do it right.